to get underway with a championship race in the Xfinity Series. And a fierce battle. Yeah, the eight-car Sam Mayer is trying to get around the 10 and Jeff Burton. 60 to go. Connor comes back out. Back out. We've got a spin here off of turn four. It's Jeff Burton. And they're stacked up, three wide. Going into turn three, and the 10 comes down the racetrack. I'm going to have to, you know, I know where Jeb was thinking, but he comes down and catches the right front fender of the 78. All season long, I've shared knowledge and experiences with growers across the country, learning what it takes to sustainably grow enough for our growing world. Today, a journey that began nine months ago at a potato farm in Florida ends with a discussion about cover crops in North Dakota and an in-depth discussion about both tracks. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey what's going on? it's all good. I'm Jeff Top. Jeff, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, you got Jeff. Got a pretty place here. Hey, thank you. Hey, man, Jeff, Tom Daniel. We I've, met before I've over... I've seen you a couple times. Yeah, I think over yep. those video conferences. Yes, we sir. get really tired of. Yes, right? sir. <laughs> Lee Top. Nice to meet you. I appreciate you having us out here. It's a beautiful, beautiful part of the world. How long has this operation been, been going on here in your family? Uh, this operation, I'm third generation. My sons that uh, take care of the vast majority of the day-to-day, -day, uh, they're fourth generation. We're, uh, by average size scale, we're probably larger than the average, but yet uh, we still keep our core values and uh, and we're still family run, family operated. We can grow a lot of different things. So um, we've grown as many as, as 12 different crops in a growing season, um, all the way from chickpeas to flax to um, pinto beans to wheat, corn, barley, uh, durum, it. spring wheat, winter wheat. You know. So how, how has Nutrien Ag Solutions been helping you and uh, your family here on your farm? Nutrien, we consider them part of our team. Um, we have a, they have a, a real in, uh, important role um, in our operation. It's just like uh, what you do in, in your line of business in racing. You know, they, they're uh, helping us stage everything and and Lee uh, Top is the manager at our local branch in Grace City, and he, he just does an awesome job. He's for your us. right hand guy, right? Uh, he's the go to man. If we need it, he takes care of us. It truly is a team deal because, you know, he needs me, I need him. We appreciate each other, and, you know, it's a planning thing. Just like right now, you're already thinking of next year. Well, we've been thinking about next year for two months. months. Yeah. Got <laughs> so, it. I mean, uh, we. There's not really a dull moment. This farming operation for us too has been a big impact with us on our carbon program for this year. And they've been uh, instrumental in helping by putting their farm in the program and helping us learn from what they do and how they accept practices and which practices work for them. And really this particular farm is probably one of the best examples of carbon sequestering and, and uh, sustainable practices like biodiversity. As agriculture continues to evolve and change, um, we have to be willing to look at some of these new things, um, embrace them. You know, like the variable rate uh, aspect of fertilization that we're doing now, um, just about all of our nitrogen will be variable rated from here on out. And it's basically, it's a, it's a cost management tool. It may <coughs> save us money, it may cost us more money in some areas. But with the cost structure that we have to work in today, it's just smart for the environment, it's smart for the land, it's smart for our pocketbook, and it's smart for uh, supply chain. Variable rate seeding on the corn and whatnot to follow the same principle as what he's talking about on the fertilizer. No point in loading up, you know, the heavy seed populations on ground that just can't do it. So, you know, there's lots of, lots of avenues. So we wanna make sure that everything we apply to that acre gets used by that crop that's growing there, right? So we don't want it to have to show up in a stream or a river or anywhere else. We want it right there. We want to produce the maximum amount we can produce, but we want to make sure we do it efficiently. So a bunch of different tools you're using, maybe planting some cover crops? 
Yeah, we've been planting cover crops on and off for a period of years, and everybody's looking at it's above the ground. No, it's what's going on below the ground in a cover crop mm -hmm. that helps it be real biodiverse and sustainable long-term for soil health. And legacy building. It makes it stronger for the next generation. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about, man. Well, we were talking about cover crop. We've been talking about it all year. Why don't we go get our rain jackets and go take a look? Hey, I'd love to take you. Let's go check this stuff out. Right, I'll show it. you what we're doing. All right. So this is the cover crop you're talking about. Yep. I recognize some of these from deer food plots. Well, each one of these species, whether it be the turnips or the radishes or, or the grass species that we have growing here, all of them have a different function, okay? So each one of them are providing their own uh, issues. Where you had where you had drought here yep. this year, I, I would say you've got a lot of fertilizer left over, right? Yeah, right. So these these different uh, 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 species are bringing that nutrition back into the root zones, and it'll be available now for that next crop when it gets ready to plant it. So they're doing exactly what we want them to do. These are going to break down because you see that deep root zone. They're going to break down those compaction layers that we're looking for, where he's running his equipment over the ground or different things, and he's creating compaction those are gonna create the breakages of those compaction zones. And it's gonna help on water infiltration because it's infiltrating as we Got speak it. right yeah. now, right well, now, Jeff? Yeah, yeah, and then you can see in the in the dirt, yeah. in, the, in the prairie trail here, see all the water? It's probably two, three inches deep there. And here in the field, it's all infiltrating and going down like into it's the soil. into the soil like it's supposed to. And it's and, all in the roots, isn't it? And it's all about the roots. I mean, everyone, you know, some of the fields that we drove by that had cover crops on earlier, you know, we'd grazed them off. And, and like we're saying, it's not about the top growth. It's about what's going on underneath the ground because this is all gonna die. Right. It's gonna get covered up with snow tomorrow. And it's, it's life cycle is done. But this here, all the below ground is what's gonna help build our organic matter and help make this a better soil for us. Lee, thanks for taking some time in the rain. You. you want some black? <laughs> there you go. Appreciate it. Uh, Let's go it. get out of here before uh, the snowstorm gets there. I'm ready all, all about right, that. Right, I'm let's good. Let's roll. Well, Jeff, my NASCAR season has came to an end, and walking around your farm today with you, looks like your season's come to an end, and racing and agriculture are really running hand to hand, don't they? Our businesses, they really, they do truly parallel each other. Mm -hmm. And it's two tracks because we're a lot of times we're in the present and yet we're thinking about the next thing, the next track, the next year, the next segment, the next show, the next race. And so our businesses truly do have a two-track mind. Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, the things that I'm going through, you're just going through them differently. Um, a lot of things are out of my control. A lot of things are out of your control. I'm always planning for the future. You're always planning for the future and always looking at things you can do better. Um, your crew, you have your family, and I've got a different crew. Yep. It, 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 it all works hand in hand. Well, and, and uh, both of our careers, you have to be, uh, you have to have a survivalist mentality and you have to sometimes just be willing to um can't quit you can't quit you're not going to be a quitter you're going to no. you're going to just dig down that much deeper and make it work we probably had the one of the worst crops that i've ever witnessed in in my uh probably 43 years of of uh, putting a crop in the ground and uh, didn't see it coming yeah kind of suspected it might might not be good we try to mitigate as much risk as humanly possible and lay off as much risk as we can. And- uh, This didn't and, work out. And, and plan for contingencies. My season this year wasn't wasn't the best in the world. I had higher hopes to go deeper in the playoffs and win some more races and we were close, but it just, it didn't, didn't work out. Just like you said with what you were talking about. So um, things are difficult sometimes and just gotta find the positive in them and go to the next next fight, you know? It's neat how, you know, we both come from 
legacies and a heritage. And, you know, there's nothing that would satisfy me more than to have my grandsons and, and eventually their kids continuing on with this. And there's no reason why that it can't. You got a, you got a great family here and a beautiful farm. I've really enjoyed um, the opportunity to uh, every Saturday for 40 weeks turn the TV on and I don't get the chance to watch them all. You've been a great spokesman for Nutrien and I wish you the best with uh, well, a new sponsor it. for next year. Thank you.